It says in verse 2, and then in verse 13 we see that the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood him 21 days. Um, I'm having trouble with math here this evening. Somebody tell me how many weeks 21 days is. Three weeks. Three weeks. When did God answer Daniel's prayer? When he prayed the first time. And so he's been in mourning and he's been waiting for this answer to prayer and God answered it instantly. And now here we find some opposition to God's answer to prayer. Let me point out some things from the text this evening that'll help you not get crazy with this passage of Scripture. First of all, do we have an enemy, the Satan? Are there, are there legions of satanic followers who are opposed to God's plan and to God's people? The simple answer to that question is yes. Christian, study the Bible on spiritual warfare. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against spiritual wickedness, or against the rulers of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And because of that, we're supposed to put on the whole armor of God. And the scripture details what the armor of God is and how we're able to stand it. We're supposed to take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit. We're supposed to have our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You know that it's interesting, or we're supposed to have our loins girt about with truth. It's interesting that all those things have nothing to do with talking to Satan. Look at what the Scripture says we're supposed to do spiritual warfare with. You know all those things have to do with us? Hey, the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. The Bible's not for the devil. It's for you. Take your sword of the Spirit and apply it to yourself. And then you'll defeat the devil. You know, a lot of times we think, oh, I'll take the, I'm going to take the sword of the Spirit in Jesus' name, I rebuke you. Ah, da, 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 da. Frank, leave the demons alone. God's got angels in heaven that can deal with the demons. Stop messing with them. Don't mess with them. That's giving place to the devil. You study what giving place to the devil is. It's messing with him. You mess with him, and I promise you, you're focusing on something besides applying the sword of the Spirit where it belongs. You're messing with something besides the preparation of the gospel of peace. You, you, you mess with the devil, and you're messing with something besides having your loins girt about with truth. See, all those things apply to you, not to him. I speak truth to you. Don't speak truth to the devil. He's a liar, and he's not interested in it. You're the one that needs truth, you see. Uh, so, so spiritual warfare... I just want to point this out as an aside because people go to this passage of Scripture. This is one all the guys that like to write on demonology and uh, that believe that even the crazy stuff that Christians can be, um, can be indwelt, that God's Holy Spirit would cohabit with the devil and that sort of thing. And the truth is, is that the Spirit of God's in you, my friend. He doesn't share habitations. Either you've got God's Spirit in you or you've got a spirit of the devil uh, if you've got one, you may just have a swept house which is open to any spirit, but uh, you don't have one or the other. And I want to warn you, Christian, that any person I've ever met who has gotten into this spiritual warfare and tried to fight with the devil has gotten distracted from what the Bible says fights the devil, and that is doing well themselves spiritually, and they've been destroyed by it. And you look at these individuals, I'll name some names if you'd like, uh, Bob Larson, uh, let's see, uh, Becca Brown, um, you may not know them, you don't even need to bother, but you look at these individuals that, that have an exorcist ministry, and they get fascinated with demons and these things, and you find out that in the end, it destroys them, and I mean the scandal and the things that happens to them is terrible, and the reason for it is because they don't know the scripture. They don't understand that the devil's playing with them. They're not fighting the devil. He's playing. They're, they're playing with the devil. You don't play with the devil. You don't mess with him. God's got angels in heaven that can do that. And that's what we see here. Here he is, this individual who's in whose presence, because of his angelic, because of his holy, heavenly presence, the men who were with Daniel fled away and Daniel is struck to the ground and cannot even get up. That is his presence and his strength. 
And he was sent the day Daniel prayed to answer in answer to Daniel's prayer, and he was withstood for 21 days, three weeks. And just don't even tell me that a person that Daniel was afraid of who could be withstood for 21 weeks If someone could withstand him, don't tell me you can mess with that person that withstands him. You understand what I'm saying from this passage of Scripture? Here's a passage of Scripture. People love to talk about demons and how we pray for devils and for different angels to come and defeat these devils. And I'm just telling you, the devil's bad news. Don't mess with him. Can, do you understand the point tonight, Christian? We're not to live in fear of him. Let's point that out now. There was a little problem, so Michael, the archangel from heaven, came with, stood him and took care of it. And I promise you, God could have sent Michael at any time he wanted. Okay? So, if you think, from this passage of Scripture, that prayers are hindered because, well, my prayer hasn't been answered, and so there's some kind of satanic involvement in this, and, and Satan's keeping God from answering my prayer. Satan can't keep God from answering your prayer. He didn't keep God from answering Daniel's prayer, but it's interesting that Daniel had enough of a relationship with the Lord to be in mourning until he got an answer. And so let's make some practical application from that this evening, friend. It's okay to ask God for something, but when you ask God for something, how about expecting an answer? And when Daniel began to pray about this matter, he did not stop until God answered his prayer. Sometimes the answer can be wait a while. But God will give you assurance and a peace. You ever been praying for something and, you, and the answer to it didn't come, but the assurance did? And he just said, you know what? I can rest. It's very much like this praying for loved ones to be saved. I'll tell you something. You'll just be sick and die before they get saved. If you love your, if you love your loved ones, you want them to come to Jesus. And there has to come a time when the Lord just gives you assurance and says, you know what? Your prayer's answered just just wait. Pray for him until you get the assurance, my friend. But isn't it a wonderful thing? I, I, I've had people come to me and say, Pastor, you've got to pray about this. You, are you praying about this? And I just tell them I, I did pray about it. And I believe God's answered the prayer. Well, what's the answer to prayer? Well, I don't know yet. But I just, I've got a peace about it. The Lord's given me a peace about it. And I know he's answered it. Well, you've got to pray about it. No, I don't. I don't have to pray about what everybody tells me about. I have to pray about what I know God hasn't given me an answer for. Your prayer life's personal, isn't it? It is if you pray. It's not personal if the only time you pray is Wednesday night when we have prayer time and you ask other people to pray for you. Your prayer life's somebody else's. But Daniel has a real prayer life. And he knew he didn't have an answer to pray, prayer to his prayer, and, and God sent him a, an angel to answer. What a beautiful picture of God's love toward his servant Daniel. Did Daniel need to know about the kingdom? He had everything he needed to know. What do you need to know in life? I'll tell you what you need to know, whatever's your business. Daniel's business was God. Is Israel going to be set up in my lifetime? And God's answer was no. That was his business, right? That's what he needed to know. I mean, that's what would have affected how he lived. Nothing else would affect his, his life and how he lives. I'm telling you something, Christian. You don't need to know when the rapture is going to happen. You just need to know it's going to happen. That's your business. And that's what you pay attention to. You mind your business. But isn't it wonderful that God loves us enough to entrust us with certain things for comfort, for assurance, for peace? And this is a message of comfort that God is bringing Daniel. See, the message that to Daniel is Israel's been under the impression that the Messiah is going to be an earthly ruler that's going to, uh, he's going to get peace in Jerusalem, who is going to be able to deliver the people of the nation of Israel, who is going to be able to conquer uh, all the kingdoms around them. And that's their picture of the Messiah. And what Daniel needed to know is that's not what Jesus is going to do. He's going to come and take care of the sins of his people. And Daniel fully understood that, the Bible says, in this passage of Scripture. He was, he was made to understand it. Now, verse 16. 
When, I, when he had spoken such words to me. Now, okay, verse 14. Now I've come to make thee understand what shall befall thy people in the latter days, for yet the vision is for...